customs officers are always on high alert for bootleggers using cheap flights to bring in tobacco to sell illegally on the UK's booming black market. In Bristol, officers have received intelligence that a known bootlegger is returning from Malaga in a group of four. The main target had over 26 kilos of tobacco seized only two weeks ago. Will he be mad enough to try again? The X-ray has found four bags full of tobacco. Now it's up to Anne and the team to stop and question the passengers and prove that the tobacco is not for their own personal use. Bootleggers come in all shapes and sizes. This time it's a retired couple who pick up three of the four suspect bags and then split from the group. They almost make it through the channels, but Anne closes in. Is it only the two of you? Yeah. The three holdalls are stacked with tobacco. The main target has slipped through empty-handed, but the final passenger in the group isn't so lucky. Her bag contains 30 kilos of tobacco, 10 times the guidelines. The couple have another 57 kilos. Altogether, an amount like this is a criminal matter. No wonder they're pretending not to know each other. OK, I'm just going to do a couple of checks on your passport a minute. They're saying they're travelling just together, aren't they? Yeah. Get them to, get them to see that again. She's saying she's travelling on her own. They're in a group. They're together. Yes. They've got 57 kilos between them. Isn't that arrestable? If, oh, it could be. Only if we can tie them in together. Tying the passengers to each other proves a little easier than Anne and Joe expected. Do you... Are you together or do you know each other? Well, we've come together. Are you travelling together? You're travelling together, OK. They've all just admitted that they're travelling together because they were talking to each other. Did they say that initially when they stopped? No, they he lied. Travelling by himself, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, obviously, I, I don't believe that this sort of amount can be for your own personal use. I believe that. The sheer amount that you've brought in. I've never been in trouble with the police, never been in trouble with the customs. We smoke tobacco, and that is for our use. They have enough tobacco to last 14 years, but it was split between three passengers, so it won't be treated as criminal. But they will now be interviewed to decide the fate of the tobacco. I do not believe for one minute that that is for their own personal use. Even if they were smoking, you know, 100 cigarettes a day. He seems pretty adamant that yeah. he's done nothing wrong. And that's right. That's the most I've seen come through the airport in the last couple of years, and that's it. At this point, most bootleggers simply admit defeat and abandon their goods. But this passenger decides he won't go down without a fight. In Gatwick, sniffer dog Rossi and his handler Claire are targeting another Spanish flight, this time for Class A drugs. Each dog has only one handler, and their close bond means that Claire knows when Rossi picks up even a hint of drugs. They want to stand still for a second. The passenger is intercepted and seems very nervous, but Andy's bag search finds nothing. What's that? Just a charm. Yeah. Not convinced, Andy swabs the bag for drugs and picks up a massive hit for cocaine. Quick chat with him. He's, he's very, very nervous. Mm. And uh, taking an iron track off there, got off a hit of four, so I'm going to get a, an SOP on him, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if he's got something on him. OK. All right? All right. OK. It seems Rossi and Claire were right. Yeah. So Andy confronts the passenger with the evidence. It's a drugs dog. Uh, I've spoken to you. you. You seem very nervous, OK? Uh, I've taken a, a, a swab, as I explained to you, from your baggage, and I've got a very high hit for traces of cocaine. So what I want to do is search you to make sure you have nothing on you. No problem, sir. Okay? You no understand problem, sir. that? Yes, yes, okay. no problem. Do you have any objections to that? Do you have any objection, any problem with that? No, 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 no. you okay, check me everything you want to say. The passenger is playing innocent, but the search of person will prove if he's telling the truth. Back in Bristol, Anne's preparing for a fight with the passengers caught with 87 kilos of tobacco. 
They have enough tobacco to last a heavily addicted smoker 14 years. But neither have yet asked for a cigarette. You said that I took an hour to write up my notebook. No, you left this outside waiting for it. Yeah, you actually said that I took an hour to write up my notebook. That would be your specific... I said my words. specific words were, you left us sitting out there for an hour in the freezing cup. Well, I did not right say, up. but don't. Let's get it straight. OK, well, you've got to tell what. If you're no, going to write... Don't try and intimidate if, me. You are intimidating me. No, Little not girl, at all. You might get properly. With you. you do your job properly or don't do it at all. Bring somebody else no, in. If you're going to take this attitude, yes. I'm not going to interview you. I'll invite you back at a different day. No, no, no you day. come to my house and interview me. No, me that back. doesn't happen. Well, you bring somebody else then. Until you're prepared to speak to me in a well, proper manner, I won't deal with you. What planet are you on, for goodness sake? You people, get to the dock. Stop the people coming in. Do your job. You don't do the little thing. You're like policemen who pick people up for barking. Catch the criminals. We're not bloody criminals. Well, actually, it's a very large quantity of cigarettes. Wait, uh, no, it's tobacco. You want to get that right? But it is not a large quantity. It is a large quantity. smokes all the time. It's, it's, Two people. Really? It's, it's, you smoke, do you? It's a large quantity. Do you smoke, do you? Do you, do you well, it is, because you're telling me it's a large quantity. I'm saying, did you smoke? No, you're I not am. qualified to judge, are you? I am. No, I'm you're not. Bring somebody in that's qualified to judge. You don't smoke. You don't know how much tobacco goes in the road, do you? Yes. You're going to clue. Well, look. Right. No, so anyway, go away. Bring the little girl back with what I've just said. No, you don't, don't speak to us like that. Why not? This is disgraceful, and it will not end here, I can tell you. We are not criminals. And you are treating us like criminals. <laughs> Picking out the criminals amongst the innocent passengers is a skill that comes only from experience. And customs officers in Gatwick have seen it all when it comes to the risks smugglers will take to make money from drugs. One smuggler that stands out from all the rest is Paul Brady. Well, when I, I stopped Mr Brady in, in the Green Channel, um, I examined his baggage and found really nothing of customs interest at all. Um, but there was something about him that I wasn't satisfied with. and it's, Generally, if somebody hasn't got anything in their baggage of customs interest, then they may have, have smuggled it elsewhere. So Mr Brodie was then taken to a private room and he was searched. The body search found nothing, so suspicions now centred on what Brady might have hidden inside his body. A sample of urine was taken from him and tested on our machine at Gatwick, and the result indicated the presence of cocaine inside of his body and I, I then arrested him on suspicion of importing a controlled drug into the UK, concealed internally. Officers wanted to X-ray Brady to prove he'd swallowed packages of cocaine, but he refused. Instead, he was detained in a Gatwick custody cell while officers waited for the evidence to emerge. Brady had begun a waiting game that would go down in customs history. He was um, refusing to eat any food. He refused um, to drink any, any drinks that we provided to him unless it was a can of Coke which he could open himself and that's all he would do. And of course this went on and on. Without food, it soon became a week without him going to the toilet. But officers had Brady under 24-hour surveillance to ensure none of the vital evidence was missed. We had to have grounds to keep him in, in our custody when we had to go in front of the magistrate every seven days. One of the things we did was to iron scan um, his suit um, and this indicated whether we still may have, the, the cocaine level was actually going up, which it was. After three weeks, and with drugs seeping into his system, they began to fear for Brady's life, but he refused to give in. It would only take a, a very small amount to actually kill the person outright, so it's a, it's a dangerous thing to, to do anyway. After a staggering 48 days of defiance, it was the smell of the custody officer's lunch which finally forced Brady to crack. After 48 days, I was actually off shift and I was at home and I had a call from my uh, main manager at Gatwick who telephoned me to say, yes, he's produced. So it was quite an emotional time, and I still feel quite emotional talking about it now. So uh, it was sort of a relief. Consuming his first meal for seven weeks, the officers wouldn't have to wait long to get their hands on the evidence. Uh, it just gave in completely, so he must have been absolutely starving, but obviously the body couldn't take it. 
and we, we, I had to sit with him along with my colleagues um, to recover the remaining packages from his body. The stubbornness of Brady was beaten only by the determination of the officers at Gatwick. I mean, given his due, he gave it a good try, didn't he? <laughs> and he pleaded the only thing he could do best, which was to plead guilty at Croydon Crown Court, where the judge gave him the sentence of five years. And that's something I'm proud of, you know, so uh, it was good. Still to come, suspicions are raised on board Searcher when a sailor tries to stop officers coming on board. Come on board, we're on them, man. We're coming on board now, sir. Coming up, Anne's argument continues with tobacco bootleggers in Bristol. Behave correctly. Um, I don't think I need you to teach up how to I do think that. Somebody needs to teach you. Gatwick, Andy's search of person has identified the cause of the positive cocaine hit. The man has confessed to using cocaine whilst in Spain. So you say the reason for the, the high reading that we got here was because you had a couple of lines of coke yesterday? Oh, OK. Yeah? Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah, it's quite high. You use it quite regularly? No, not very much, actually. Okay. Not very much. Having confessed to using cocaine abroad, the man's now trying to avoid trouble. I came up with a very high reading for cocaine. I want to put that to him just inside the room there, why that would be. He said, well, he had a couple of lines of coke yesterday with his girlfriend, which would do the trick. So stripped him off, nothing there at all, and uh, gradually calmed down once he realised that that was what we were going to do. So, no guilt, yeah? Thank you. Welcome, okay. The high reading was from personal use, so a disappointed Andy has to let him go. So, uh, nothing today, maybe next time. Custom ship Searcher has tracked a yacht sailing towards the southwest coast of England. Within the 12 mile limit, any vessel is a potential smuggler, and customs officers have the power to board and search. This is the six miles. You can see that the, the target vessel that we're interested in is just off the six mile limit, so he's well within the 12. The cutter launches the high speed rib team from the stern, giving the yacht no time to hide any goods on board or jettison any drugs into the sea. The boarding team don't need the skipper's permission, but he seems unaware of their powers. Customs, sir, we're just going to pop on board for a second. Come on board, we're we'll getting back to port. When we get back to port, we've actually got to come on board now, sir. Pardon? We're coming on board now, sir. Ah. How long have you been over in the Sillies? Uh, two days. Two days. I can hear the rib crew saying there they're going to take some uh, swabs on board the vessel, some iron track swabs, and then they're going to bring them back to the cutter and we can test to see if there's any uh, traces of narcotics or explosives on the yacht. To avoid upsetting innocent sailors as much as possible, the drug swabs quickly identify any wrongdoing. The man's initial attitude may be a good sign of a smuggler, but the swabs will be the ultimate test. <coughs> If he's got anything on his hands, that will have moved onto the tiller. Nothing there. The swabs are negative, and there's uh, no trace of any drugs on that particular boat. All negative. Nice, uh, clean yacht. Okay. There it is. Back to the boys back in there. Quickly exonerating the innocent is as important as arresting the guilty, and this sailor is free to continue his journey. And after the 12-hour shift, the cutter searcher returns to port. <laughs> Meanwhile in Gatwick, police have arrested a man as he stepped off a flight from the Caribbean. His problems get worse when the officers bring him through customs. He's dressed very smartly. Why is he wearing a suit? Was he sitting in economy or is he flying? Virgin upper class. Why, is, why, why do you wear a suit? No one else in the flight yeah. is wearing a suit. So, yeah, we'll find out. We'll ask them a few questions. Well, what's happened is that the police had warrants, outstanding warrants for this man. And as soon as he came off the plane, they arrested him at that stage. And uh, they brought him up here. 
and as the flight is one which has uh, uh, brought previous jobs to us, shall we say, uh, they asked us if we wanted to have a look through his luggage. And the obvious thing is that given the risk of drugs coming in from there, we said yes. So we've gone through the luggage and what we want to do now is just to make sure he's got no drugs on his person. Many smugglers try hard to look innocent and Chris asks permission to do a body search. He's arrived on a flight from Montego Bay. Yeah. And as you can see, he's probably the most smartly dressed guy on the flight, dressed in a suit, which is ostensibly a holiday destination. It seems as though he's got various layers on as well. Yeah. So we just want to rub him down, make sure there's nothing under all those layers. That's fine, Chris. Yeah, 8.15. Yeah, well, Thank you. Thank you. Cheers. Thanks OK, if you're to come this come way. with us as well? Stay there. Well, if you can follow us. OK. Catching drug smugglers Catch is a daily occurrence at Gatwick and officers find packages in a variety of places. The strip search is as uninvasive as possible, but it's an uncomfortable experience, especially when Jeff discovers the initial reason for the man's arrest. Uh, he's actually wanted for a driving offence. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, we have to make 100% sure, certain. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, that's we did a quick search and nothing was found, so uh, we've handed it back to the police. He's been uh, re-arrested and uh, taken back down to the uh, station. This man isn't a smuggler <laughs> and leaves cooperatively with the police. <laughs> Meanwhile, in Bristol, three passengers have been caught with 87 kilos of tobacco, but they're not going quietly. You have treated us really badly, really, really badly, like we've done something wrong. Until you're prepared to speak to me in a proper well, manner, I won't to deal with you. It's the biggest haul the team have seen in years, but the man is adamant it's not being brought in to sell on the black market. Anne's decided to interview the man to see if he's telling the truth. If not, the £11,000 worth of tobacco will all be seized and destroyed. How much do you smoke a week on average? Two or three fifty gram packs. Yeah, generally two. Okay. How many cigarettes do you tend to make from one fifty gram pack of tobacco? What could you get? Thirty. Okay. At one fifty gram pack on a good day, it gets twenty out of it. <laughs> okay, sorry. Um, he would expect those goods to last him nine to ten months. All right, give him the benefit of the doubt. 30, 30 kilos are for him. Yeah. That's 600 pouches. And he reckons ten months. Yeah. Definitely not longer than a year. Because he bought the same amount last year. And that means he's going to be smoking eight and a half pouches a week. Totally and utterly he's, ridiculous. Oh, he says he smokes two pouches a day. Two to three pouches a day. A day? <laughs> the only thing I haven't... Asked it is about rolling. Because mm -hmm. are we allowed to ask that? Mm. Oh, what do you mean? Going to roll one? Yeah. yeah. I'm going to ask you to roll one of these for well, me. Really? I'm yeah. not playing any silly games. Well, you've, I, you've said that you can listen, roll. No, I've been very good. I've played the game. Yeah, well, but I'm not asking. questions. You've asked. And if you really think. At 65 years old, I've smoked on my life. I'm now going to play a silly game. I'm asking Proof. you to roll one cigarette. No way. I'm not being silly. No way. That's insulting. The two other passengers have had their goods seized. And now the moment of truth. Anne has to decide if the angry passenger gets to keep his tobacco. And he's not going to be happy. I've looked over what has been said today and um, you failed to satisfy me that the tobacco is for your own use for the following reasons. I'll give you the reasons. One, uh, the excessive quantity is actually nine times over the guideline of what you are supposed to bring in from a... Not, but what, not what I'm supposed to smoke, yeah, fine. When you say guideline... Yeah, there is a guideline yeah, of 3,000... It's a guideline. Yeah, but, but it's still... Nine is, to, I'm giving you my... I'm not going to argue about it. Okay, I'm giving you my reasons. Um, consumption, three pouches a day is grossly oh, excessive. Right, yeah, OK, go on. Right, you're going to tell me what to you've smoke got, now. You've got no smoking paraphernalia at all. That's correct. You refuse to roll a cigarette correct. for no reason. Correct. Um, not for no reason, I made it clear It's not to you credible. I'm not going to demonstrate... OK, fine, you refuse to... a cup to, of tea... You refuse... I didn't ask you to drink a cup of tea. No, I'm telling you that. You asked me to do something just as benign. Look, 
Can you just right. listen, can you please? Can just sign it, please, and we can get to the court? Right. It's not credible to import this quantity when travelling yeah, again yeah. in three weeks. Yeah, yeah. Inconsistencies in your account. Travelling you actually said... Inconsistencies in my yeah. account? Just let me finish, yeah, go right? Yeah, let's hear it. You actually said that on the same flight, your um, son and a female friend of his travelled, whereas your wife told Mr Hanlon that nobody else that you knew travelled. Um, that that is the point. You, that is the point. If we were travelling on we're not going to... When you were being questioned. Did they ask you if you're travelling on our own? Yeah. yeah. Well, we are. Well, you're not because you know other... You, well, no, I'm, so, I'm so you another lady I was sitting beside. That, um, Mrs Stevens didn't know that her own son was no, also no, on the I'm flight. No, what I'm saying to you is we are travelling on our own. That's what my wife said. Anyway, get to it. It's Come also on. not credible to get only 20, or 30 or even 40 cigarettes from a 50 gram pouch of tobacco. Right then. Generally, you would get at least 80 to 100 cigarettes out of Not if you roll them in a bag. What, in a so box. are you suggesting yeah. that you roll I'm them? I'm not suggesting anything. Let's right. go to court and have my solicitor. Okay, if you, to if you could sign. <laughs> but you and need to sign the date as well. Sign the date. You put the date. You don't Look, sign I'm not going to argue with you about put, sign. I'm just trying to get you to behave correctly. Um, I don't think I need you to teach me how to I do that. Somebody needs to teach you. I could say the same about you. Anne's ordeal is finally over. He was trying to intimidate me, I think, perhaps because he thought I was a girl, uh, like he was calling me little girl and stuff and waving his finger in my face. But that doesn't intimidate me. He was just nitpicking at things, really, because he knew that he hadn't got a leg to stand on. The passengers walk away empty-handed, having lost 87 kilos, which will now all be destroyed.